Here we are in front of the Pietà di Palestrina, Piety of Palestrina. As you may know, it is not the only one of Michelangelo's works to portray the epilogue of Christ's life. The first, the Pietà Vaticana, the Vatican Piety, carved between 1497 and 1499, belongs to the artist's early works and is certainly the most popular. It is a work that exceeds all the standards. Tragedy and pain have no place on the face of such a sweet and young virgin, so young that at the time it caused quite a fuss. Between 1547 and 1555, Michelangelo, already quite elderly, instead created the Pietà Bandini. Old age combined with the turbulent character and suffering of the artist is also reflected in his relationship with his work. Dissatisfaction led him to destroy it, and the sculpture survived only thanks to a servant who picked up the pieces. Having completed his second Pietà, Michelangelo immediately set to work on the Palestrina Pietà, which is right before your eyes. It is a strange work, so strange that some critics have cast doubt on the attribution. There are those who, noting the lack of proportion in Christ's legs, speak of a disciple of the great teacher, but the strong analogies with the Pietà Bandini lead us to think that the argument is more complex. In fact, the body of Christ and the figure behind that supports the dead body, as well as the smallest character helping to support the dead body, seem to be the product of the same hand that carved the Pietà Bandini. In this work, the tension expressed by the poetry of the incompleteness reaches levels that are exceeded only by the last of Michelangelo's Pietà, the Pietà Rondanini, on which the artist continued to work until the last day of his life.